and welcome back to Visions. I'm Mirella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with Ajit Gunasekra, who is a curator and a writer. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. Can you tell us how do you find these people for your, you know, to put the artwork up? Well, I'm finding that uh, the artists that are most delightful to work with and that are easiest to work with are actually finding me, <sighs> uh, which is great. But uh, of course. Um, I advertise in the usual places, Arts Hub and the Yellow Pages and whatever. And also people find me through my website, which is ajadart.com. And uh, the rest of it is pavement pounding, as you do when, you, when you're new in an industry and you keep uh, abreast of it. So mm -hmm. I go to launches and I, I go and visit exhibitions and I surf the net and look at artists' websites and uh, canvas them to mm. actually uh, participate in group exhibitions and that sort of thing. So if any of your mm. viewers actually uh, recognise me as I'm about town at a, at a gallery or something, they should feel free if they're an artist to, to, to come up and say hello. Mm. And how often do you change the artwork that's up on the walls? Exhibitions usually go from four to six weeks mm. and uh, it is possible to do solo shows as well uh, and um, mainly group shows of mm -hmm. four to six weeks. Right. And do you keep them up until they sell or do you just change them every four to six weeks regardless? The, the exhibitions are publicised. and the, the, I've got an exhibition schedule worked out oh, okay, uh, at yeah. this stage right through till the end of July. Yeah. Uh, the, the beauty of the space is that because it is four floors, there is scope for having multiple overlapping exhibitions running at the same time and uh, not just scope, that is mm. what actually occurs there. Mm. So uh, eventually tied into um, what I was saying about earlier about the collaborations with uh, benefiting the community and working with community organisations, I have plans already underway for dedicating different levels of this space to specific genres of art. For example, uh, I've got a trip planned uh, up to the Northern Territory to go to Arnhem Land and even um, uh, places as remote as Maningrida mm. to source art directly from indigenous communities mm. which produce mm. art so that there can be a floor de dedicated yeah. at, at the art space, yeah. at Carstens to showcasing Aboriginal art sourced directly from the communities with a view to the money, uh, the profits raised, mm. going straight back into the community and not getting lost along the way in the bureaucracies. Mm. I've also um, started the process of negotiating with importers um, and, and suppliers from overseas uh, to look at bringing beautiful, quality, authentic art from uh, developing countries, um, places as far and wide as Peru and El Salvador and, and Sri Lanka, oh, of course, because of my background, and, yeah. and Indonesia and places like that. Um, and having, having the money, having the profits certainly mm. just go straight back into those communities so that those struggling artists in those countries mm. can benefit directly. Yeah, that's and of course, it's it's wonderful for us because yeah. as a community, yeah. as 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 for the clientele of uh, of Carstens, but yes. certainly as a community, as as the yeah. Melbourne arts community, yeah. to get access, yeah, to in insight into other cultures and how they do their art. That's beautiful. Precisely. Very colourful. Very colourful. <laughs> fun. And have, they, have you got any other collaborations in mind, or they, that's it at the well, moment? <laughs> well, apart from Generation Next on the 27th, yeah. uh, I'm very excited about a solo show for an artist called William Holt, mm. uh, which is going to occur in April. And then the, the big event, which is taking a lot of organisation time already, mm. is uh, a collaboration with PangeaDay.org, which is a worldwide film festival mm. with some very big names involved, which is a film festival of short films on the theme of the universality of the human experience. Mm. So what I've done is set up a collaboration where I curate an exhibition called Myriad, one World, Many Stories, mm. and launch that exhibition on the same day as Pangaea Day, which is the 10th of May, at Carstens, uh, with the screening event for, the, uh, for, for Pangaea Day. And the whole idea with Pangaea Day, if you check out their 
their website um, mm. is that it's films from amateur filmmakers from around the world on this theme of the universal human experience regardless of culture and background mm. and it'll be a four-hour screening around the world mm. uh, the official sites are uh, London New York Kigali Ramallah Tel Aviv uh, Rio Dharamsala places like that wow. and and every capital city around the world will also have a screening and and the Panja Day screening in Melbourne is going to be at Ajadat at Carstens on level 12 there right and it's going to be shown at the same time in every yeah so places. the launch of the of the the myriad exhibition mm. which is a group show of uh, a, a very diverse range of artists all with stories to tell but story uh, stories to tell and messages to deliver to us I yeah. think so I've got um, artists involved as diverse as Jill Anderson who who is a Melbourne artist who creates stunning pottery with a very punchy political message mm. to Daryl Bartholomews from Sri Lanka who is a dedicated conservationist photographer who is who is passionate about documenting the, the the nearly extinct wildlife species which are being destroyed by the wars and the deforestation in Sri Lanka so mm. uh, mediums as diverse as that yeah. but with a real resonance yeah. about it is one world yeah. and what story would you tell if the whole world is watching is the Pangea Day slogan yeah. and I'm also hoping uh, I've started the process but you know these sort of bureaucracies can take a little while I've started the process of um, communicating with Who on Earth Cares, uh, which is a subsidiary of the Conservation Foundation, because uh, I'd really like them to be involved as a partner on that, on that exhibition and on that event, mm. and be a beneficiary of the funds raised there. Beautiful. Gee, mm. you've got a lot on your plate, haven't you? <laughs> there is a bit on, on my plate. That's I'd so love exciting. to work with a, with a host of other um, community organisations. Mm. I'd love to do something with VAC down the track and I would love to work with people like um, Kids Undercover who I think do fabulous work here locally so it's it's about not postponing what can be done today for some time in the future you know mm. because I think with a little bit of foresight and with a little bit of chutzpah and, li and just for the for the uh, sake of asking whether it can be done often things come into being which might seem a little bit too big and a little bit too hard otherwise beautiful <laughs> about to go to a break now sure you're watching visions stay with us we'll be back with more very shortly